my fellow spooks and haunts, and welcome to December. Now that it is December, at least where I am, we have gone past sweater weather, and we are now in... You actually need, like, a full-blown coat to go anywhere for any amount of time kind of weather. So I got the urge to make some practical history-bounding skirts. I picked two styles, one that could work for many different eras, and one that's pretty specific to the late 19. I also decided that they should have pockets and fun linings, but mostly pockets. With the first skirt, simple skirts gathered, pleated, or cartridge pleated onto a waistband have been popular throughout many decades and centuries, and the late 19s are a pretty cool era of fashion that doesn't look cartoony or out of fashion even now. The hemlines were starting to flare out on long skirts again toward the end of the 19s, and it was popular to hide the closure method within the design, which I did by means of a button placket and a fake button placket on the other side. These are also finished in a matter that avoids any visible machine stitching, except for the buttonholes on the late Edwardian slash late teens skirt. No specific reason other than just that flannel doesn't really hide machine stitching well, and I thought I would be happier with it long term. I used somewhere in the ballpark of six yards of black cotton flannel, as well as at least three yards, maybe three and a half, I don't quite remember, as these two fabrics have been in my stash for a while and I was eager to use them. Step one was to cut out all of my panels using a measuring tape and a lot of frustration. Uh, this wasn't the most ideal of methods to do this, I just don't have a ruler longer than my acrylic ruler and I don't have a table that is long enough to actually allow me to do this with, so I used measuring tape and just kind of did my best. For my pleated skirt, I had three panels, and each of those was one yard or 36 inches in length. This makes a nice ballet sort of length on me, a little bit before the ankle, and it also makes room for half an inch for the top of the waistband and to roll over the hem, as well as a deep hem of two inches. The ones for the 19s skirt ended up being 35 and a half because I hadn't quite gotten around to drafting the actual shape of the panels yet, but I knew I wanted to draft the waistband on a curve similar to how the keystone skirt is drafted. So I wanted to give a little bit of ease for that as well as the allowance for a one inch rolled hem and a half inch at the top for the waistband. These pink panels are the lining for that pleated skirt, and they actually don't have that deep hem allowance, they just have the hem allowance for the waistband up top, because I don't want to add that extra bulk in the seam allowance at that deep hem. It's also just kind of a waste of fabric. I used a similar process for the panels for the other skirt, but I ended up with a lot less fabric than I was anticipating, and I had to cut some narrow panels uh, in anticipation of making some pleated sections of the skirt instead of more of what I had been doing because I was simply running out of fabric and didn't feel like buying more. And the pleated panels didn't even work out, and I ended up having to just do some messy darts in with it. And it looks okay, but it wasn't what I was anticipating. I 
I didn't have very much fabric left over, but I did have enough to cut out my all-important pocket pieces, which are, of course, vital to the construction of the skirt. I mean, I guess I could have used something else push came to shove, but it was much more satisfying to just have one pocket be a little bit funky shaped because it just was cut off in the process of me doing all of this. Then I drafted the main four panels kind of messily on my glittery floor and I used a concept similar to the Keystone Guide's general principles. I figured it wasn't too far off in history enough that they were maybe using the same sort of drafting techniques at least for the waistband since the waistband was still drafted on a curve at this point. But I only made one symmetri completely symmetrical panel and cut the footage because it, quite frankly, it looked very ugly. The last thing to be cut out was two inch strips of flannel, each cut to 30 inches long, which gave plenty of space for whatever closure method I chose to finish these skirts with. I also did the same with each of the cotton prints so that I wouldn't have too much bulk in the waistband as might have been caused by using the cotton flannel for both the outside and the inside. Then it was pocket time. Now, for the interior of the finishing work, I used French seams on this, but I also took advantage of the selvage on one side in order to kind of finish things off, which made my, my installation process of these pockets pretty easy. I sewed them in wrong sides together here, and then did up the seam. I follow the same process with the 19 skirt, only this time I was real conscientious about into which panels I was sewing my pockets so that I wouldn't run the risk of sewing the pockets like on the back of the skirt so that all my panels were the correct way around and also so that my pockets wouldn't interfere with my button placket. I sewed all of my panels together at this point, including my lining panels, making sure to leave a space in all of my lining panels in order for the pocket to stick out, because I wanted to, the pocket to be fully on the inside of my skirt, but also not flatline the skirt. These are all traditionally lined like we would think of it in a modern sense, not flatlined as things typically were during 
this sort of historical era. Seems secure, it was pocket time. And I'm finishing these with French seams, meaning I'm sewing the wrong sides together first, then turning it inside out, ironing it, and sewing the right sides together so that it, in the end you have a very nicely finished seam with the edges all tucked away inside of the seam and it makes for a really durable pocket or a really durable seam in general that looks very nice and neat. pockets already to be inserted into their slit in the lining. I attached my lining to my actual outside fabric, and I hadn't realized before I did this that my outside fabric, it's a comfy cozy flannel from Joann's, is actually several inches wider than my, like, actual lining fabric, selvage to selvage. And I ended up just putting it into a pleat and then just ignoring it because I didn't want to go through the hassle of putting in all of my pockets again. So it, it worked okay. I have nothing to complain about. It's not like it ended up adding too much bulk anywhere or anything. It was a pretty thin cotton to begin with. But yeah, that was a thing that happened, so beware if you're ever using the Comfy Cozy line at Joann's. It, it's a quilt fabric, but it is not quilt width. This pleated skirt was the narrowness that would not be. I'd originally intended to cartridge pleat this, but then I realized that I had not prepared this for cartridge pleating. As anyone who has actually done cartridge pleats would know, I had never done cartridge pleats before. So that was a no-go. And then I tried to gather it and realized that the bulk of the flannel wouldn't allow it to gather down to the measurement of my waistband. And then I broke the threads and decided to do pleats instead. So these are 9,000 narrow little pleats approximately nine jillion of them. They are a quarter of an inch wide from the outside and they are two inches deep a piece. So this was gathered down very, very narrowly and my God, did it take forever to mark this. I then repeated this process on the 19th skirt except for the incredibly frustrating process of trying to squeeze it down into the waistband as I had different problems when I attempted to squeeze this one down into the waistband. But we hadn't gotten to those quite yet at this point during my recording. I reinforced my waistbands with a little bit of midweight interfacing just in case so that they didn't absolutely collapse under the weight of my skirts and end up bulging or folding or being weird, as can happen with waistbands sometimes. It's just good practice to reinforce your waistband with some sort of heavier material. And this was what I had in hand because I wanted to use it to also reinforce the hem of the pleated skirt so that it would have a little bit more body. I finally, finally got my waistband on the pleated skirt to fit into the waistband that I needed.
needed to sew it to at long last. And at this point, I thought all of my struggles were behind me. All I gotta worry about is, you know, 9,000 hours of whip stitching, which, you know, was a pain, but nothing too insane. It was at this point that I moved on to my 19 skirt and realized that my original plan of doing a little pleated section like I thought was so cute in the fashion plates and was so excited to do was not going to work as I had not allotted enough room for the curve from my hips to my waist and when I actually steamed the pleats down they just ended up like stretching out weirdly around the hips and it looked really bad so then I went through and unpicked the top five inches so that I wouldn't have to redo my pockets and turned the panel that was going to be pleated into kind of an awkward one-sided dart which actually worked and I now have enough room and it doesn't look terrible but I was not expecting that, and it was very frustrating as I was going through this. It also just kind of made my top hemline uneven, because that's what happens when you dart one of your sides, but not the other one. It makes one side a little bit longer. It was at this point that I added my fusible interfacing to the very inside, which you cannot see really at all in any of my footage because it's inside of the black flannel, it's not attached to the lining, and also steamed my hem into place before I did up the center seam because I figured it would be easier to do it then while I was also putting in the heavyweight interfacing. Then to procrastinate on my hand sewing, I used some interfacing and some scraps in order to create a reinforcement and a button placket for the inside of the 19 skirt. Now I know what you're thinking, the 19 skirt? But you're you're using the the pink fabric from the pleated one. And you're right. And I got about halfway through whip stitching that placket onto the other, onto the 19 skirt before I was like, wait. And then I spent several minutes looking for any possible extra scraps and did not find any. So this placket is just going to stay there. We're just gonna have a fun little pink placket in our, in our black and purple and blue skirt. It's there's nothing I can do about it. Then I did my buttonholes, which are three buttonholes on each side, but on only one side did I actually cut open my buttonholes, as the ones on the other side are fake buttonholes that just have buttons sewn onto them. Then it was time for all of my handwork, including putting the buttons into the button placket and the fake placket, as well as installing a hook and bar in each of my skirts at the waistband for the real true closure. I also whip stitched all of my hems by hand and it was a lot of whip stitching but I did not film any of it because I had come down with a cold and spent all of the time that I was whip stitching grumpy because I couldn't breathe out of my nose. I also slip stitched my pockets to the lining during this time so that they wouldn't flop all around and be weird and end up like squished between the lining and the outer fabric. a few finishing touches that I want to get to eventually, but nothing pressing with these skirts. 
they're finished. I just need to tack down a couple edges so that they stay in place and you don't see the lining anywhere. For the most part, I'm pretty pleased with how they turned out. I wish that I had just planned appropriately from the get-go with my 19 skirt, but these are practical and comfortable and I will wear them. And they're warm. I cannot convey to you how warm they are. You'll notice that in a couple of my clips, I took off my cardigan that I put on at the beginning. And that's because with my cardigan on, I was too toasty. And I'm never too toasty. I grew up in the tropics and moved to Buffalo. I am never too toasty. And also, while flannel might show every single machine stitch that you ever put in it, you know what it doesn't show? Whip stitches. Because I whip stitched this entire hem and they're, they're just hiding cozily into the flannel. In terms of pairing with my everyday wardrobe for things like work, I think I'm going to get a little bit more out of the Edwardian skirt than the fuller one, but the fuller one is more comfortable. So I'm definitely going to have to find a few pieces that don't look costumey with that one. Anyway, like this video if you liked this video, subscribe if you would like to see me make more warm wintry garments, I have a coat coming up here, and consider joining my Discord, you can find the link to that and my social medias in the description box below, as well as links to some other things that I have made. The Discord is also not just for sewers, it's also for digital artists and anyone who does anything with creating stuff. 